Hey loves and welcome back to my channel. My name is Ijoma and in today's video we are going to learn how to make this beautiful blouse with a fine yoke and an exaggerated sleeve, a standing exaggerated sleeve. So we are going to do the cutting and sewing and I will do a freehand cutting. I don't want to do any pattern drafting for this blouse. So here are the fabric. Here is the fabric and my lining i have added a tissue gum to my lining already i have my tape i have my scissors i have my bone i'll also use a breast pad for this but if you want to use a bra cup for your own it's still okay so we will cut first of all and then we will sew so for this blouse it will be a hanging so like i don't know how to explain it but it will not be up to 24 inches it will stop around 22 so if you are measuring it do not measure from 24 upwards stop at 22 23 it depends on the height though so i've measured my shoulder i will measure my chest line my boss point my under boss my half length and then the full length plus allowance so you can see my full length is 22 plus allowance 23 and i cut off the ss so after that i will mark my armhole please if you want to label these lines you can label it so that you will not get confused so right now i will me measure 3.5 or 3 but 3.5 is okay for the neck width and for the neck depth you are free to make it 7 or 6 you can even make the neck depth to reach your chest line that is eight inches it depends on how deep you want your v-neck to be and for the v i don't want it to be a straight v i want it to be curved like it will look curvy a bit i don't want it to be a straight v neckline so after connecting you can now measure your dart line your nipple to nipple and cool like i said i will do a freehand cutting for this blouse so i've cut out my neckline and my armhole so at the bust point i will measure my dart line my nipple to nipple is eight divided by two that is four and i added half an inch i am doing a freehand cutting so i added half an inch seam allowance to the fabric so at the under bust, i measured four at the half length four full length four so i will connect the four four inches down to the full length and then from the four inches at the under bust, i will connect to the 4.5 i marked at the bust point and at the chest line i will also mark 4.5 so i will just extend that 4.5 line straight to my chest line so if you want your yoke to come up a bit you can stop you can make your yoke to stop at six inches or seven inches so at the under boss i subtracted 2.5 inches that is for my breast curve so i'll go ahead and mark a straight line down from my under bust down to the full length then from there i will curve so for the upper bust tightening i will just take out one inch or you can even take out half inch but one inch is okay for the upper bust tightening that is from the that line you go in by one point one inch sorry at the chest line then you cut out your yoke first of four after cutting out your yoke you will cut out your center front after cutting out the center front please remember to notch your under bust so that when you are cutting your pad you will know where to stop at so i am notching my under bust right now so after that i will cut out my upper bust tightening then the under bust tightening and down to the full length so you can see my cup shape is out already and i want to like trim it down a bit so after doing this you place your center front on the side place it in a way that it will cover this breast curve i don't know what to call that but let's just call it breast curve then after that you go ahead and take your normal body measurements plus two two inches seam allowance 
then at the full length of this blouse it will have a basque so from the half length uh, you come down by two inches or three inches it depends on how high you want your basque to be i came down by three inches then from there i connected my basque so my basque is not going to be pointy it will look curvy it will not be too sharp so from your half length come down by three inches or four inches it depends on what you want then connect to the full length and you get your bar so what this is what we have for the front you can see our upper bust tightening so for the yoke from that chest line area you will go up by three inches and then you will mark your v shape it depends on how wide you want your v to be my own is wide but if you want your own v to be tiny that means the wideness of the v will not be more than three inches or 2.5 but my own v is wide so i am done cutting out the front and this is what i have so i will cut out the aligning and i'll also cut a pad for it so for the yoke of this front i will have to recut it I did a freehand cutting so i will have to recut this yoke so that i can add half an inch seam allowance to it for joining so this is for the back part the back back part will be easy you can see i will just place my front on my back and then add, i'll add my zipper allowance and cut so i'm just placing the back the way i the front the way i cut it out before but i closed my darts for the front I closed the that so I would cut out my zipper allowance for the neck that I want it to be 2.5 I don't want my neck to be very deep so I have cut out my neck that my armhole and the side so the length of the back will stop at that area where my basque started you can see the side of the front and the side of the back will be the same. So the lo the front part of this blouse will be longer than the back. You can see where the length of the back stopped at. It stopped at that area where I came down by 3 inches at my waist. So this is for the sleeve. I have folded my fabric into two. I folded it twice so that I can get the two sleeve at once. So this sleeve is going to be wide. The full length, I made it 13 plus 1 inch seam allowance. Then the wideness, I made it 12. So 12 is okay. If you are cutting it for a fat person, you can make it 15 inches wide. But 12 inches wide is okay. 13 inches long is okay. So I told you guys that I will recut my yoke the yoke for the front i told you guys that i will recut it so this is what i'm cutting out now i placed the former yoke on this one and i will cut out the shoulder and the neckline the same way but around that v area at the down part i'll add half an inch around it i'll also add half an inch around the chest line so that when i join it to my blouse it will not be shorter than the actual length it is better for this to be longer than for it to be shorter so that you can adjust it from your shoulder if it is long so you can see i added half an inch around the v area and at the chest line area and i have two pieces here i will use the fabric as the lining for this yoke the yoke will have a lining but use your fabric as your lining so i am done cutting out everything and i added tissue gum to my yoke both to the lining and to the fabric i added tissue gum to everything you can see how our yoke looks so right now i will go ahead and join the front pieces for the back i will leave it for now so here is for my sleeve if i added hard gum to my sleeve and to the lining of the sleeve i added hard gum to everything so if you have a peplum gum or a peplum stay you can add a peplum stay to both the lining and the fabric to make it to be very firm so here is the yoke i am done turning i am done running a stitch around the neckline and around the v area do not close that chest line area. Do not close it. Leave it open. So after, I will go ahead and turn it out. And before you turn, please remember to notch all the all the V points. Remember to notch all of them so that when you turn it out, the V will be pointy. You can see the V shape is 
okay it is sharp because i notched all the v points so do not forget to notch so after doing that i will iron this yoke very well please remember to add your tissue gum to your yoke if possible add a hard gum to it so that it will be very firm it is very important so you can see that my v is the two v shape that i added there is a kind of wide but if you want yours to be small fine so here is the front part i am done joining i have ironed my pad and i did the same thing to the lining as well so after joining and ironing the pad i will join the yoke to the fabric before turning with my lining but before i do that remember this blouse has a bone so i will make my channels for my bones first of all this is the fabric that i cut out for my channels so it has a double boning i have a video where i explain different boning techniques so i have the double bone method so this is what i will do to this so here is the sleeve i am done joining the down part so after joining you can see how i place them then you go ahead and use one inch to shape it so that the so that the sewing allowance will not show i don't know if you get so here is the back i will if you want you can add your channel your bone channel on the lining if you want you can add it to the fabric though i added mine to my fabric so i am done adding my bone channels to my front part and i have added my yoke also so right now i will turn it with my lining but before doing that i will add my bone so first of all add your bone before turning the front part with your lining it is a double bone so i ran my stitch three i ran three stitches on like three lines on each piece so that i can get two space two spaces abby <laughs> so i can get two channels in one so for the back i did a single bone method it is not a double bone method after doing that you will iron these bones so that they can be straight ironing will help them relax so that you can take your measurements and shape properly so i will sprinkle water on them and i will iron so ironing this will help it to be straight so after doing that you can now go ahead and turn the down part with the lining you will turn the sides and the zipper allowance then that is all for the back so after ironing the back and turning i'll also repeat the same thing to on the at the front or to the front so you sprinkle water on the bones and you iron so that they can relax a bit i i'm using a plastic bone plastic bones are stubborn but if you have a reg line bone you can use a reg line bone it is very very okay you can even sew your reg line bone directly to the fabric you don't need to make your channels for it so after ironing i will flip my yoke over i will flip it and then i will go ahead and turn with my lining you will turn the down part the upper part and the side so this is my sleeve i am done shaping you can see how i shaped this sleeve so that i can hide the sewing allowance or the seam allowance so i'll go ahead and turn this sleeve out so after turning them this is what i have so if you are sewing this type of sleeve shaping the sleeve this way is way better you can see you cannot see the seam allowance because if you raise your hand people will be seeing the seam allowance and it will not look nice so after doing that i will go ahead and iron the down part of the sleeve and that is it they are looking neat now so i am done shape i'm done um turning the back i have added a zipper to the back i added my zipper to the back before taking my measurements but you can do it the way you want so i'll place the front on the back and then i'll take my bust measurements and my waist measurements then i will go ahead and 
shape after shaping i will also add my sleeve so you gather the sleeve around the shoulder and that is it so after shaping this blouse please remember to trim your armhole before adding your sleeve and at the end of the day this is what you have i hope our blouse is beautiful i will still do some adjustments around the shoulder area so that my yoke can relax very well so guys thank you so much for watching my video and registration for our september class is ongoing so you are free to register also please 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 do not forget to subscribe and give this video a thumbs up so that more people can get to see our video you can follow me on instagram at so with ijoma facebook at so with ijoma on telegram so with ijoma so thank you guys so much and see you in my next video bye